Hey, how are we doing there, everyone? Welcome back. So we're going to be taking a look at so-called new tech that is going to be the biggest safety innovation in a very long time when it comes to motorcycles. So apparently Bosch, the German company, has been very, very busy creating new radar systems for motorcycles which are meant to act in a very similar way to the ones that you see in a lot of modern cars where the radar system is is active all the time and if it detects that an object or most of the time a car in front of you is braking suddenly then it will automatically brake for you. Uh, <sighs> We're going to kind of discuss the way how this stuff works if it goes through a little bit in detail in this article here on Visor Down. And then we're going to discuss whether or not I think it's actually a good idea. Because <laughs> there's one it's one thing that is really good innovative tech on one side that could be really safe for motorcyclists, but fundamentally the way how a motorcycle works as opposed to a car less contact patches to the road, all of that stuff. Is it actually a good idea? So let's take a look here. New Bosch tech could bring the biggest motorcycle safety improvement in years. Okay, so among the swathe of new systems set to be launched soon by Bosch, its new radar safety-based system could be a huge step forward in motorcycle safety. Motorcycle safety could be set for a major step forward thanks to an upcoming innovation from Bosch. Yep, you've already said that uh, in the title there, visor down, thank you very much. The German company will present many new innovations of the upcoming EICMA show in Milan and a new generation of motorcycle radar arguably is the most important. In a press release, Bosch has said that its new generation radar could prevent up to one in seven motorcycle accidents by integrating the radar with emergency electronic assists. Essentially, the radar would be used to detect proximity to hazards and intervene on behalf of the human rider to try and avoid a collision. This is different to the radar linked in the unified braking system on the Yamaha Tracer 9GT Plus because Yamaha's system only applies the rear brake in the event of a high pressure applied to the front brake by the rider. Bosch is set to present a new long-range radar at the upcoming blah 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 show with a range increase of 50 meters over its previous version to have a maximum distance of 210 meters. Additionally, it will have a 15 degree horizontal aperture which improves accuracy and object detection, the German firm says. This kind of emergency radar system is used in the context of autonomously operated braking is not a new thing, generally speaking, even if it is such a in motorcycles and in four wheel in the four wheeled world it is increasingly common feature for cars and that's pretty much it okay so it doesn't actually say uh what else or how how this actually is meant to work which is interesting this one might be might be another interesting one though it's motorcycle stability control msc well we'll have a talk about that in a moment because i think a lot of this a lot of these systems might tie in together really really well so the biggest issue when it comes to computers taking control of motorcycle braking is the whole horizontal axis thing, you know? When you're going forward in a straight line, having emergency braking might be perfectly usable. But say, for example, you're on a bend and this computer decides to brake really hard, it might run the risk of locking up the front tire depending on the situation. So I think the implementation of this has to be really delicate in a lot of ways and I don't think it's going to be a be-all end-all solution to motorcycle safety all right look it is what it is okay the reason why we ride motorcycles is because we want that thrill okay not okay this might not be the same for everyone all right I'm, I'm kind of generalizing here but for me personally the reason why I love riding motorcycles so much is because of that perceived danger factor it gives you that adrenaline it makes it so much more enjoyable rather than sitting inside a cockpit surrounded by steel and, and aluminium you know you are feeling everything around you you are feeling the speed you are feeling the wind you have direct control over the motorcycle between you and the road there's nothing between you and the road on a motorcycle whereas in cars there's a lot in the way between you and the road, not to mention the lack of environment that you are actually able to experience in a car. So it makes a lot of sense. When you've got four wheels in a car, having this stuff... I, <laughs> If I'm being perfectly honest with you, I don't even like this in cars. 
There have been many occasions my wife's old Honda Civic had a system like this, had a radar-based automatic braking system or emergency braking system, and I didn't like it. It didn't trust me. <laughs> uh, there were a few occasions where, okay, I was braking because there was something in front of me that was slowing down. So I'd start braking. But then all of a sudden, the, the car would brake itself, and it, you know, it would shudder. And you think to yourself, car, I was in control. You know, I was totally in control of my braking. Why did you have to do that? And so, I mean, okay, it might be different per manufacturer, per implementation, but the one that the wifey had in her Honda Civic, I wasn't all that impressed with, to be honest with you. So you can imagine that if that is Honda's philosophy in their cars, then they might have a very similar philosophy on their bikes if they choose to implement this kind of tech. It's interesting though, isn't it? Because this is all culminating in this future where in cars, new cars, I think is it from this year or maybe next year, new cars have to have what are they called? It's it's like speed cam uh, speed uh, automatic detection. So they have cameras that will automatically detect the speed of a particular road, and it you will end up sticking to that speed unless you either override the system or you put your foot down on the accelerator to override manually the the speed limit that the car is trying to enforce. And the UK government has already said that this is going to happen in bikes at some point or other. So when you've got this kind of stuff that's being implemented in cars and it's being implemented, they say for safety, but they're implementing it in a way that's actually more restrictive for the person using the vehicle, that rubs me up the wrong way quite badly. And as much as this is tech that is supposed to help riders and it's supposed to save lives, you know, they they say up to one in seven is that what they said? One in seven... Where did it say it? Yeah. Yeah, one one in seven motorcycle accidents by integrating the radar. As much as it's meant in a, a positive light, this kind of stuff can be used in ways that are very controlling and very negative and arguably impact, will impact the experience of riding a motorcycle. Now, from a lot of you viewers in our comment section and across social media in general, when you look at riders and what they want from a motorcycle, they don't want this kind of stuff. They don't want this stuff getting in the way of their ability to ride the bike for one, but also getting in the way of the experience that a motorcycle provides. So I am in two minds about this. I think that this kind of tech in some bikes will it, it will be a no-brainer. All right? Especially when you look at big tourers, you look at gold wings, you look at uh the the the, the Kawasaki versus range, you look at gosh, who else who else does big tourers? You you know you know what I'm trying to say, you know, big big touring bikes. And maybe in adventure bikes as well, big adventure bikes. This kind of tech will probably be very attractive to those kinds of riders. But anyone who rides sports, super sports, hyper sports, I doubt will be interested in this kind of stuff. From my own personal experience and from what I want in a motorcycle. Because especially when I, you know, when I'm one of those people that, and probably you have as well, if any any of you that have driven a modern car, if you've experienced the way how a car handles this kind of automatic braking, emergency braking, first hand, it's not that great. So I'm in two minds. I'm in two minds about this. I think in some bikes it'll make sense, in others I really don't know. And this radar is going to have to know the difference between... A rider riding in a straight line, horizontal, uh, excuse me, vertically upright, and when a rider is in a bend. This system cannot interfere with a rider if they're on a bend. And for me, that is a big turnoff. Big, big turnoff. You know, they, they say one in seven. That's just what Bosch is saying, right? A company can say whatever the hell they like. It, it, it doesn't mean it's the truth. It doesn't mean that it's 
the real deal. And until this stuff has actually been implemented on bikes and until it has been tested thoroughly, we're never going to know what impact these things will actually have on a motorcycle. So let's have another look here at what else they've got because uh, it says other exhibits from Bosch. And this next one might be interesting. Bosch is also set to unveil a new version of its motorcycle stability control, MSC. The existing iteration of MSC could prevent or mitigate 5% of all motorcycle accidents involving personal injury in Germany alone if every motorcycle were equipped with it, according to the company's research. The newer version would also be targeted at smaller bikes after Bosch found that its existing system is widely used on mostly mid to large size motorcycles. To make it compliant with smaller bikes, the new MSC will be compatible not only with 6D IMU, but also the smaller 3D ABS sensors. Now, I've this is the first I've heard of this this stuff, by the way. I've not seen this implemented on any motorcycles that I'm aware of. But I'm and so so I'm not entirely sure how this is supposed to work. But in addition, a new generation rear wheel hub electric motor will be showcased that saves two kilograms and loses no performance compared to the previous iteration, while new engine management systems will help manufacturers meet future regional emissions regulations. Okay, so maybe I got the wrong end of the stick here. I thought this was going to be some kind of gyroscope kind of thing. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's just an electric motor. But motorcycle stability control, that, that kind of indicates something a bit more than just an electric motor. Unless this isn't it. Unless this image here is is not what this MSC is. I don't know. Who knows? But I thought it would be a really interesting concept to have this radar technology working in conjunction with some kind of gyro where you know you can imagine you can imagine this in a, in a perfect world where you're going around a bend you've got to brake hard for whatever reason something gets out in the road something interferes your path whether it's a car that cuts across the line whatever the situation might be you can imagine that the gyro will kick in so even if you put 100 percent braking force on the front tire unexpectedly that this gyro will be able to keep the bike upright. It won't just dive to the ground or something like that, or at least it will delay the inevitable to some extent. I don't know. Again, it's it, it's difficult to see <laughs> how they're going to be able to program this, how they're going to be able to develop this for a computer to understand. Because there's... Let's be honest here, all right? All these systems use computers, and computers can make mistakes and they can fail from time to time. They're not how a human thinks, yeah? A computer will think logically about most things, and despite the fact that maybe the, logically, the logical way of thinking about a situation is probably the correct one, we've seen it make mistakes where, I don't know, it thinks the logical conclusion to resolve a situation, and it, it makes all these calculations in a nanosecond, you know, but it might be wrong. And there's always that thing in the back of your mind that wonders whether or not this stuff will go wrong one day. I don't know. I don't know. But I, I thought it was interesting because gyros in motorcycles are one of those things that I've been toying with the idea with for actually a number of years now where you have a gyro that basically means that you don't have to put your foot down at a standstill. The gyro inside the bike will keep you upright and it will make riding a motorcycle really straightforward. In a lot of ways, it will turn it into a two-wheeled car. You know, you have the same stability of four wheels on two wheels. And I think that concept is, is fascinating. I don't know, again, I don't, this, is, this is pure speculation and it might never work in, <laughs> in something like a motorcycle. But you can, you can kind of see where, where, where this could go. I mean, more stability going around bends if the computers are able to analyze the speed and the trajectory of a bend where the exit is of a bend it might be able to automatically adjust your speed. It'll be, able to, it'll be able to adjust your lean angle. It would be a case of, well, you'd be able to lean the bike over as much as you possibly wanted, but the gyro would stop the bike from falling on its side. Something crazy like that. I don't know. It could be a total pie in the sky idea. I haven't got a clue. 
but I thought it was interesting, and I thought this is what it was t- this was talking about, but maybe not. Maybe it's just an electric motor. <laughs> but I suppose I mean gyros are in effect on electric motors when you when you think about it. You know, they are a form of electric motor, but instead of working in one axis, they're working on a spherical axis, if that's the the right terminology. I haven't got a clue. But it's interesting, and in <laughs> it's going to sound really stupid, but in the wrong hands, this kind of stuff can do bad things for motorcycles. And as much as bikes can be dangerous, more often than not, I've said this for a long time, it's down to the rider. All right. The rider making the decisions is the one that makes it or breaks it. You know, you get a lot of people that say things like, oh, it's it's not you, it's other people on the road. But you'll find that the vast majority of cases, it is down to the rider. Yes, you're going to have those 10%, 20% of incidents where there wasn't much you could do about it. But more often than not, there is. And that's a lot of the time... That comes down to experience, that comes down to awareness as well, not not losing concentration, things like that. But once you get into a habit of hazard perception and understanding where hazards come from and anticipating where hazards can be, then you will know what to do in a particular situation, even if it doesn't happen. But you're ready. You're ready to make an to 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 make corrective action if you need to. So I prefer to have better quality riders than having tech making up for the shortfall of unskilled riders, if you know what I mean. Yet, that is more than likely going to result in more people making mistakes and more people potentially dying as a result. I don't know. But maybe in yeah maybe this this stuff will will find its place in the market for smaller bikes bikes maybe up to a2 maybe 400 cc things like that maybe this is where this kind of stuff will shine because it will make up for that lack of experience for a lot of riders but then again you know when if they ever get onto a motorcycle that doesn't have this kind of stuff they think they can do something when they actually can't because it's actually this stuff that is protecting them honestly it's a can of worms you really don't there's no right or wrong answer here you know there are arguments both for and against but yeah for me personally I prefer having skilled more skilled riders than less skilled riders and having this stuff that's just me anyway let me know what you think down in the comment section below as always I've kept you here for about 20 minutes now so I find it I find it absolutely fascinating and innovation is always going to be a good thing but We'll have to see how this stuff gets implemented to know whether or not it's something that riders will actually appreciate or whether they'll think, oh, for God's sake, this thing's getting in the way again. You know, who knows? But anyway, thank you ever so much for joining me in this little kind of debate here with what's to come in motorcycle safety tech. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you would want in your bike? Is this radar automatic emergency braking stuff something that you think will help riders let me know down in the comment section below anyone that has watched this and you found it interesting leave a like let's see if we can get 100 likes on this one 100 likes it's free hit subscribe if you're new hit subscribe it's totally free for you guys and <laughs> you can always unsubscribe at some point in the future you can always unlike a video if you want to in future all right there's no contracts to sign, all right? It's it's totally up to you, but it really helps us out, all right? As content creators, really, really appreciate you guys when you hit like and get subscribed. A lot of you as well might not realize that you're not subscribed yet. We have a ton of viewers, a ton of new viewers every single week that are not subscribed. So make sure you hit that, hit that subscribe button. Double check as well. You might think you are and you might not. Double check for me. I'd really, really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you again, everyone. We'll catch you all in the next video. Take care. Right safe.